Hey everybody, this is Praxis. In this video, I want to talk about how you can set up your home on solar without having one of these gigantic full house systems. This is something I've mentioned in a lot of my videos and I want to get a little bit more into the details about how you can buy one of these standalone units and I'm specifically going to be talking about this uh, unit made by I hope I'm pronouncing it properly, Opus. How you can take a system like this and use it to run things that are in your house, like your lighting system, you know, fans, ventilation, refrigerators, things of that nature, and do it in a way where you don't have to be running a bunch of extension cords to the front area on the panel, where you can make it so like just you flip a light switch in your bedroom or whatever, and this thing can power it. So that's what I wanna talk about in this video, is how to take units like this and use them to run your actual house. So when there's an emergency situation and you actually need to use a unit like this, it doesn't feel any different at all. Okay, so like I said in the intro, what I wanna talk about in this video is how to take units like this, these standalone units, and connect them into your house so that it can run systems in your house in a way that you don't really even know that you're, you're running your house off of a little system like this. The way that my house is set up is that I have a whole house system. This is a very large panel. It uh, takes in about 6,000 watts of solar energy from our roof, and it stores it in uh, 10 kilowatt hours of battery space. And that runs all of our basic house systems. There's occasional times when it's like, you know, it's really, really cloudy for several days or something like that where we pop back on to regular grid power, but 98, 99% of the time, we're just running our house off of solar energy. And you can imagine that saves us an awful lot of money. Now, doing your house in this way with making one giant whole house system is great. It has lots of benefits to it. Like I mentioned, we save a whole bunch of money. And it has that, uh, that nice peace of mind where just your whole house is running through it and you don't have to think about kind of uh, you know, jumping from one little system to another. But there are downsides of running it this way. And one of them is that if there was a component in this whole house system that went down, guess what goes down? My whole house, if my whole house is reliant upon this. So I like to run my house in a little bit of a different way where I have the whole house system which runs, uh, you know, the majority of the house, but lots of critical systems within my house are run on these kind of standalone smaller units. This one that I'm talking about in this video is made by, again, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing it properly, Opus. Uh, I should say uh, from the get-go, this is a system that was sent to me. Uh, I, it's the, the, they're not paying me to do this video, but they sent it to me for free. Uh, you know, they asked me to just do a video review, and this is the video review right here. Uh, but I don't want to just just talk about this particular unit, but how you can actually use this unit or other units that you may have for powering your whole house. But I'm going to focus on this unit since they were kind enough to send it over to me for free. Now, uh, running your house with a bunch of these is kind of nice because if you have one of these units that go down, your whole house doesn't go down. If one of these units just runs a certain circuit within your house, that circuit may go down, but all the rest of your house is going to be fine. So you have a lot more resiliency uh, for you know errors. And there's always kind of you know things always break. You know the way things are. I, I haven't actually had any issues where this system broke or any of these other systems have uh, ever broken, but. You know, the reality is that that's certainly a possibility. And it's much better to have part of your system go down than the entire system go down. So what I'm gonna be doing before I talk about these units specifically, is I wanna go around and I wanna kinda of show how I integrate these systems into my house. And it all does start right here at these units. These units get plugged into these extension cords, which are 14 gauge extension cords. And they run up into these little boxes here. Now you see I've got them labeled A, B, and C. And the reason I've got them labeled here is because these guys head off over to my breaker box and I have some outlets over on the other side. So whatever I plug this box A into, and you, this plug here is actually labeled C. So this box here has a wire that comes out of it. That's a wire C and that is plugged into the Opus system. A and B are plugged into other systems right now. And whatever I plug C into is gonna be powering outlet C over by my breaker box. Let's go over there now and I'll show you how I kind of integrate the circuits in my house into these types of units. So here I am over at our breaker area and before I get into any of this stuff, I just need to say that if you don't feel comfortable, if you don't have the expertise to work with 
this type of situation in terms of going into a breaker box and rewiring things. This isn't something you just jump in and do. This is the type of thing that you can do and kill yourself. So, I, you know, I just want to say that right from the, the get-go. Don't just watch this video and think, yep, yeah, I'm, I'm good to go. You need to have some level of proficiency in working with this stuff before you try anything that I talk about in this video. But if you do, here we go. So uh, what we got going on here is the breaker box. And if you're familiar with the way breaker box works, uh, all these wires up here are all the circuits that go out into the rest of the house. Now, there were a couple of circuits that I wanted to pull out. Uh, one was the refrigerator. One was my second floor bedrooms. Uh, and another one was related to our stairway lights and uh, some uh, receptacles in certain rooms. And these th three wires here, used to come down and went into the breaker box. But what I did is I pulled these three wires out of the breaker box. And instead I put them into these little um, metal electrical connection boxes. And from there, I connected them to heavy gauge extension cords uh, that I can plug into A, B, and C. If you recall over on the other side by the units, we had A, B, and C um, plugs. And those plugs feed down to these different boxes. So C is the box that is being powered by the Opus unit. And right, what I've got plugged into there is this power strip here, which runs my, my house circulation fan. Now, I was not able to plug an entire circuit into this one just because the Opus is only a one kilowatt hour system. And I couldn't really run a whole uh, circuit off of that. But for some of my other uh, systems, what I've got, uh, the, you know, the kitchen fridge and the bedroom uh, lights and all that kind of stuff, I've got those running into these power strips which are being powered by the units that are powering A and powering B. Uh, a is a three kilowatt hour system and B is a two kilowatt hour system. So these kind of fly over here to these uh, uh, power strips and I can plug whatever circuits uh, I want into them. I can kind of plug and play. So if one of these units went down, I could kind of patch things around. Uh, I've got all the wires numbered. This is uh, number four. Uh, is related to the kitchen fridge and the reason i gave it a number is it, it, it just to go into um breaker box number four over here so when i pulled it out i just continued to call it number four so i've got number four and number 18 going into a and number 29 and number five going into b and what i like about this kind of patch bay approach is that um you know if for some reason there was an issue with one of the systems you can really just uh unplug things stick them around in a different way and um it kind of roll with things on the fly and make it so that if something went wrong, it's not like a complete rewiring kind of situation. Now, if you're going to do something like this, I mean, it's pretty simple. Uh, these uh, boxes here are essentially just extension cords from the other room. The, uh, the extension cord in the other room where the batteries are goes into a metal box that goes into some Rom Romex wire and the Romex wire powers one of these three outlets. Uh, and then I can plug things in. So this is just a, a glorified extension cord uh, that I, I've got uh, going on here. And uh, these, uh, you know, just essentially turn the, the circuit itself into something that has a, a plug on the end of it, which I, I can either plug into one of these uh, remote systems, or uh, I, when I was pulling things out of the electrical box, I left myself, yeah, it's in the shot there, I left myself a couple of little um, boxes coming out of the box so that I, if let's say all these systems are down for whatever reason, I can plug these things back into the, the whole house system as well. I think there's a really nice way of kind of modularly uh, building things together where it's plug and play. You can kind of move things around. Uh, one thing to think about is just make sure whatever system you have that there's uh, continuous grounding because as soon as I unplug one of these uh, from here, that circuit essentially becomes ungrounded. It's only being grounded as it goes into one of these um, uh, uh, circuits that run to the, the uh, battery banks uh, over in the other room. And those battery banks are only going to be grounded if they are physically grounded. Now, most of my battery banks are newer ones and they are grounded. One of my older ones does not have a ground. So what I had to do for that is each of these individual boxes, I ran a green ground out of them. They're kind of coming down over here. Uh, and for the, the device, which is C, um, Actually, I kind of changed that around. <laughs> I just realized uh, a, a wiring uh, issue that I just created here. Uh, C used to be my ungrounded system, but now with the Opus, uh, it is a grounded system. So uh, what I've created here is actually a ground loop, which is not good. Um, after I finish this video, I'm going to pull that, <laughs> pull that out of there. Um, but I made these uh, modular so that 
as long as my stupid brain would actually remember to do it, which apparently, you know, there's no guarantee about that, uh, I would be able to ground and unground these boxes based on whatever was plugged in uh, over there. So if you uh, are, you know, the Opus system, that is a grounded system, but if you were happen to use a system that was ungrounded, you'd want to be able to ground out your circuits so that you don't have ungrounded uh, wiring within your house. So again, this isn't like a deep dive into how to do this. If you've never worked with wiring before, I wouldn't recommend opening one of these and, and starting to pull things out of it. You literally could kill yourself. But but if you do know how to do this stuff, this is a really great way of taking the system and making it really resilient. So if any one part of the system goes down, pop, 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 and you're back in business. So let's go back over to the other side. We're going to talk a little bit more about the battery bank itself. So now that we know how to take these things and kind of integrate them into your house, into the wiring of your house, uh, I want to talk a little bit about uh, this specific system. Now I've got a bunch of other ones here, which I'm not going to label, uh, just out of respect for the fact that they gave this to me. So this is going to be kind of about Opus. There are lots of different systems out there that are good. Like I said, I've never had any real problems with them, uh, but I'm going to be focusing on the Opus system. And this one, let's turn the panel on right now, because it actually just a couple minutes ago started charging up. Uh, I was using it uh, last night and it went down to about 90% capacity so I used about 10% of the capacity on this and just in the past couple of minutes it's come up to 95% and that's one of the things I want to mention about the Opus system is that it, it does recharge really really fast now one of the reasons uh, is that this particular unit this is kind of a smaller size unit I haven't bought a unit like this in a long time this is only a one kilowatt hour system which uh, means that you know technically what the name implies, uh, although it doesn't literally mean this, is that it can kick out a thousand watts for one hour. If it's a one kilowatt hour system, it can kick out one kilowatt for an hour. If it's one kilowatt, uh, a one kilowatt hour system. If you have a two kilowatt hour system, then that means it could uh, kick out one kilowatt for two hours. Or if it's a three kilowatt hour system, it can kick out a kilowatt for uh, for three hours. Uh, now that being said, there's always inefficiencies, and uh, this you know. Is, is just as susceptible as other systems are to that. And I wanted to talk just a little bit about that because if you buy a system like this, you it really pays to kind of oversize your system. Uh, when I've been testing this system out, like I said, this is a one kilowatt hour system and it was able to run my refrigerator, which runs, you know, when refrigerators kick on and off, you know, you know, when the compressor goes on, there's a little bit more use and then they kind of go into a more idle state. It was able to run uh, the kind of a medium range. It's not, I don't have a huge refrigerator, but it's not like a small fridge or anything like that. Uh, it was able to run that refrigerator for about six hours during the evening. Uh, so if you, uh, I'm sorry, I got like an eyelash in my eye here. <laughs> so if you wanted to have a system that you could really reliably run your refrigerator all night, you'd want something bigger than a one kilowatt hour system. If you're going to be getting something like this, the amount of kilowatt hours you're actually going to be getting out of it is going to be a little bit lower because they, uh, these systems, they have a charge controller, which takes energy in, which you can see right now, it's taking energy in from uh, my AC power. Uh, and it is charging up the battery and that uh, charges up the battery through something called a charge controller. You have the battery itself, which is the one kilowatt hour battery. And then you have uh, something called an inverter, which uh, changes DC current into AC current for running out of these regular kind of wall outlets that we're all used to using throughout our homes. And whenever you have an AC inverter on, uh, there's always some power being drawn, even if you don't have anything plugged into it. So if you have this thing uh, just, oh wow, it's already, already charged up to 100%. So you can see how quickly it charges, both because it's kind of a smaller battery, but also this thing really does charge up quickly. I, it, the first time I did it, I was kind of disturbed, like is there something wrong with this? Because I'm used to uh, the system's taking a little bit longer. It does charge up pretty quickly and you can, um, uh, influence the speed at which it charges. This is actually the slower charging speed. You can charge it either at 700 watts or at I think 1400 watts. I've got the manual here. Um, and the manual is something else that I want to talk about. Yeah, it's uh, 700 and 1400 watts. Um, we'll get to the manual in a bit. I think if there's any problem I have with the entire system, it's actually the manual itself. The system, the unit itself works really, really well, but there's some documentation issues in the manual I'm going to get to. Uh, but the amount of energy that you actually get out of this is, you know, it's not going to be 100% of that one kilowatt hour. What you're actually going to get out of it is some fraction lower than that because while it's just on, even if it's not being used, you're losing power just to run the inverter. And here are some shots that I took recently uh, showing this thing discharge a certain amount. And you can see on, uh, I've got one of these... Uh, little uh, kilowatt uh, battery e energy meters, you can see that uh, given the fraction of the 
power that was pulled out of the unit that I did, hadn't at that point pulled out that amount of fraction of power. So you do have some loss. So if you're thinking about getting one of these, I would certainly oversize the unit. I, I usually buy uh, units like this in the two kilowatt hour to three kilowatt hour range. Getting a five kilowatt hour system, I think would be a great thing. The, the more battery capacity you have in the system uh, that is being run through an inverter, the lower the the fraction of that uh, you know, total capacity is going to be used up just running that inverter. So I find you get a little bit more of uh, an efficiency there. And to be honest, these one kilowatt hour systems, you know, I don't want to say they're not good for very much because if you were in a situation where you know there was a blackout and you want to do things like charge your phone or you know uh, run run a laptop or you know even just some basic lighting uh, like you know you know running some some lighting like what's on my face right now you know this is going to be really fine for that but for things like running a refrigerator or anything really major it's just not going to be able to do it for very long if you only have a one kilowatt hour system in fact the only thing that I've been able, able to pair this system with in my house in terms of connecting it kind of to a circuit uh, is not an entire circuit at all, but there's one task that this thing can manage for me throughout the evening. And the task that I've paired this to is that I have a fan. Uh, it's a 50 watt fan and it runs kind of intermittently about eight hours during the evening. And uh, if I run this, uh, the fan through this thing, it will usually bring down the capacity to about 30%. Uh, so it'll use about 70% of the capacity by the morning when I can start charging the thing up again. Uh, and I, I, I tend not to like to really run these things really close to the ground. You know, somewhere between, you know, taking out half the charge to maybe like 60 to 70% of the charge before you recharge it. That tends to be the way that I like running these things. And it seems to treat the bat batteries nicely if you, uh, operate them in, the, in that regard. So specifically to this Opus system itself, like I mentioned, I, I, if I were gonna buy uh, an, an Opus system, I would not get the one kilowatt system. They're a really, really good price and they're great for small applications if that's all you want. Uh, if you want to kind of throw it in the closet and they're super light, that's one uh, crazy thing. In fact, that's why I included it on top of this old Gold Zero. There's an old Gold Zero system that I have. This is a lead acid battery and you can see the size of this system and the size of this system. It, this one's way smaller, but it's the same capacity as this old Gold Zero system. And also this one is so much lighter. When I went to pull it out of the box, I'm like, what, what did they not put the battery in? Super, super light, but it's got all the capacity, but the battery is a lot lighter than these old lead acid battery systems um, so that that is one selling point if this is the kind of thing you want to kind of keep in a closet for emergency situations uh, and you, you only want like some small benefits out of it in terms of you know charging phones like you know emergency stuff like that you know a one kilowatt uh, hour system is going to be you know just fine for that kind of stuff but if you wanted any kind of regular use out of these things I would not I would not mess around with the one kilowatt hour system because it's just it's such a small uh, capacity for any of your kind of normal daily life kinds of things uh, like I mentioned it has some other uh, features on here as well there are the AC uh, outlets that I mentioned uh, right from the beginning, and that's what I'm kind of using it for. There's some 12 volt outs that you can get over here, and then there are some of these, I think they're five volts, uh, like USB port things. Uh, and you're gonna get better efficiencies out of the, uh, these kind of guys because you don't have that uh, AC inverter running. So if you just keep the AC inverter turned off, you're gonna get better efficiencies in terms of uh, you know, getting more of your battery capacity being used to actually charge things or power things versus running some kind of like a conversion for the AC inverter. Uh, so that'd be something to know about. You can charge it off of the wall, which is what I'm doing right now. And I, I should mention, it's got, I'm not going to show you because it'd be a little hard to see on camera. It's got kind of a weird plug on it. Normally these things will come with the kind of like three prong uh, plug. And this does have a three prong plug. It is grounded. Uh, but the kind of plug that will usually plug into like the back of a computer or something like that. Uh, that's what I've normally seen these systems come with, but this is kind of a weird one. So um, you would just need to be aware that you need to use their wire for it. Um, or you know have another equivalent kind of wire for it. You can also choose uh, to power it from the sun. There's an Anderson plug on the side over here. Uh, I haven't run it that way because the way that I usually run these units, units is they are, even when they're being powered off of AC, they're still being powered from the sun because my AC system here in the house is running off of my solar panels. So I've got all these guys on timers up here. Yeah, you can see the timers. And uh, the way that I uh, charge these is that the timers will uh, charge them during the day. And then at nighttime, the timers will click off, cut power to the unit, and then the unit will continue powering the circuit that they are powering uh, you know, throughout the evening. Uh, so they're not drawing power from the main system. So that saves my 10 kilowatt hour uh, battery system uh, during the evening. So all these extra kind of systems just allow the uh, the main house system 
to uh, have a little bit less load on it during the evenings. And they allow me to maximize uh, how much power that I can capture during the day because a lot of times it's a case where you fill up your batteries uh, in your whole house system and at that point, you know, Someone, somebody turned on a blender or something like that because it's like use it or lose it. This gives me an opportunity to actually put that power somewhere and store it later on for the evening. Uh, in terms of other features with this, I mentioned you can do uh, multiple uh, charging speeds, which is good for me because I don't want to overload my whole house system. So I uh, always turn the units down to the lower setting. And I think that's a nice uh, option if you're going to be charging off some kind of a generator. If you don't have a generator, they can keep up with the 1400 watt. Uh, charging uh, speed you can charge it at the lower uh, 700 watts uh, but also like let's say you're in some kind of a situation where there's rolling uh, blackouts and whenever the power comes back on you want to charge up as uh, quickly as possible it's nice to be able to turn it into the uh, the fast uh, charging mode so you can like drink in as much power uh, as quickly as you can uh, i mentioned the one issue i have with the system oh and before i, I get to that it, you can use this through like a mobile app that's not really my speed uh where uh, you, you know you can control it uh through an app on your phone i never i'm never really interested in doing any of that so i haven't experimented with that but that is an option where you can monitor it and uh, control it through your phone as well and that's through this little button this iot button here uh which brings me to uh the major issue I have with this, which is the documentation. Now, I will say when I reached out to the company, they were able to solve and over whatever questions I had, and they actually sent some video tutorials on how to do some of the things uh, in here, specifically how to switch to that lower speed. Now, the way I'm not going to, this is not going to be a video tutorial because I'm just kind of like roughly saying this from, from memory, but the way you switch into the, um, uh, the option uh, set for slowing down the speed is you kind of hit the DC button and the IoT button at the same time. Uh, the video suggested you want to hit the IoT button slightly before the DC button. I'm not sure exactly what the deal is with that. But essentially, you kind of are playing between these two buttons and kind of simultaneously-ish hitting them. Uh, and that puts you into a mode where you can kind of select the charging speed. Uh, if you read the manual about operating instructions for fast charge and slow charge switching function, you, you see a picture. And in the picture, there's some hands pointing to those two buttons. But... It, the description doesn't even just mention those buttons and it talks about the AC button and it's kind of, uh, I'm not going to read the actual passage, but it's sort of grammatically contradictory with itself. There are some issues with the manual. Now, uh, these are things that they could easily uh, switch, uh, fix up over time. In fact, I've, I've volunteered for them. I will rewrite that section for you guys if you want, because it's a pretty easy procedure. Uh, it's just your manual doesn't, doesn't talk about it at all. Uh, and I'm, I'm sure there are some other things in this manual. Well, I'm not sure. I, I suspect there are probably other issues in the documentation. But that said, when I reached out to the company, they were super helpful and they gave me the lowdown on how to actually do things. But I wanted to just mention, if you buy one of these units and you're uh, like a paper manual kind of person and and you're having trouble it's not necessarily your problem <laughs> it's probably an issue with the manual because again uh it's not like it wasn't an issue where i was having trouble figuring out like the sequence of buttons being pushed it, you know per the way that they're describing it the description doesn't even mention any of the buttons that you're supposed to uh, you know push so you know there are some issues there but in terms of the unit itself it's working really really well it charges up uh, quickly it's you know, sends out the power reliably to the rest of the house. I think that the uh, display is nice. It, tell, it gives you an estimate of how much time you have left, uh, you know, to run the system. It talks about like, you know, how much power is going in, you know, the, the capacity uh, that you're uh, currently running at and everything. I, I think that they're a pretty good system. I, again, if you were gonna do what I've done and integrate this into your house, I would not go with a one kilowatt hour system. I'd go with one of their bigger ones. And that goes for any kind of a company that's out there. I, I just, Personally, the way that I like using this stuff, I like running my general day-to-day -day life in a way that makes it such that if there is an emergency situation where the, you know, the power goes out, uh, you don't really have to change any of what you do. Like if there's a blackout, I don't have to drag a bunch of these things out of my closet and suddenly start wiring them through my house because if the power goes out, my house already is kind of running off of these things. So um, I, I like living the way that I like living as though there's an emergency situation and making it so that I have a comfortable lifestyle, uh, you know, given those possibilities. So if those possibilities manifest, then 
I just continue having the same comfortable lifestyle, you know, living in fear here, <laughs> uh, here in my, uh, my uh, prepper retreat. Um, so that's the way that I approach it. Uh, and if you were going to approach something similar where you want to use one of these systems in an ongoing way where it's just powering systems in your house, the way that I kind of have mine set up, I would definitely recommend staying away from any one kilowatt hour systems just because there's so little that you can do with it. I would go with two to three to five kilowatt hour systems and use those throughout your house. And you pair a bunch of those together and you're gonna be sitting really pretty even if you don't have uh, you know, power coming in from your grid, especially if you have some good solar panels that can kind of charge all those things up. That's it, I hope you found this video helpful. I wanna thank Opus for sending me this. The system works really great. The manual ha has a little bit of room for improvement on there. And if you guys are interested in getting a system, I'm gonna put links down in the description below. And if I, I forget whether they uh, provided me with a discount code, but if I have a discount code, it'll be down there that you could use to save a little bit of money off this. That's it, and thanks for watching. Hey YouTube preppers, if you enjoyed this video, here's another that I think you might like. But before you click on it, I wanted to take a moment to thank all the people you see on the right hand side of your screen. They help to support all the work that I do here over at Patreon.com. If you'd like to join them and get your name added to the list, the link's below.